Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon. Oh gosh, let's start going. Boop, 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 boop. Hi everybody, welcome back. To... Oh, I'm so annoyed with myself today. I'm just not feeling it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. It's because. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. I am hoping that I'm going to have the right energy for this in introduction because I'm so annoyed with myself. This will be about my fifth time of doing it and the first time I think I had a good take with it, but I deleted it. Why? I don't know. I'm Sharon. I digress and sometimes I'm ditzy. Anyway, thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with me and my channel and my creative process. I thank you for all the time you do spend with me because I know that everybody's time is precious and I know that there's so many other amazing people out there on YouTube and art to inspire you. So without digressing too much, today's video is going to be based around this piece and I absolutely love this piece. I'll try woo, to keep it from different angles. What I, what I liked about this is I have always been an artist that works with acrylic or oil paintings and sometimes charcoal but in the last 12 months just over you've seen me exploring fluid art and that's included resin just started into the acrylic fluid art alcohol inks uh, medallias is that the right word I don't know anyway but I felt a little bit burnt out and I felt a little like I needed some re-energizing i needed to do some art for me and i needed to sit down and be calm and focus and lose myself in that process and not be pressured by time so today you're going to see how this piece came alive you're going to see it in three stages you're going to see the first attempt at painting this where i changed direction so you see me then do another two layers where you see me paint this in and then come in with a fine detail. Now my inspiration for this piece came from, I believe it's Katie Jolbling. I'm gonna put her name on right now. She is an amazing artist. Now she's somebody that inspires me when I'm working on canvases and I'm using brush. She is somebody that adds so much energy to me and inspiration and she's got such a calming presence and she's just, I, I find that I connect with her art. So she inspired the colour scheme for this. Not necessarily the piece of art, but she did inspire the colour scheme of one of her wave crashings. And when I received some Arteza pigments to uh, test, and I am now an affiliate just for full transparency, I looked at my canvas and I wondered what am I going to paint. People that know me and know my channel know I just love an ocean and I needed to feel calm, centred and relaxed. So this is what came out. So thank you, Katie. And um, and also thank you to Arte Ar Arteza <laughs> for giving me the an opportunity giving me the opportunity to explore your pigments. And I have to say I'm in love already. There's so many more that I want to do and show with you. So just so uh, you're very clear, being an affiliate doesn't mean to say that's gonna cost you any more money. Just means that if you order from the link that's in my description, a small percent of money will go towards me to help my channel. But I would never recommend anything that I didn't believe in or trust. So I'm digressing. All I want to say is, if you enjoy seeing me create this, but you would like a tutorial, let me know and I can do that. The video is being fast forwarded uh, at three times the speed just to help with the process, but I am providing commentary. But I hope that you come along to the beach with me. I hope you relax. I hope you can almost hear those white waves lapping. And other than that, thumbs up, subscribe, share. Comments are always welcome. Remember to click in my uh, link just under my video, just about there. And that will show you all my descriptions and remember to just look up here i think it's your top left corner and on there i'll put some links to my other videos that i'd love for you to watch and they're also connected to the ocean but other than all that goodness thank you for hanging out with me i'll see you on the next video remember to be creative and remember to be true to yourself and your art and just share with the world so because i'm sharon i'm from vivid days and i work in all kinds of medium so there is such an array of colours. If you've worked with Arteza pigments before, you're going to know what I mean. But this one was such a surprise and delight for me when they sent this. There is a broad spectrum of colours. And for me it was, let's work on a blank canvas and let's see where it's gonna, uh, what it's going to create. And I would definitely recommend them. So I'm going to go into the box now for you. So 
I have now unpacked my box and I will show you what they look like inside. So the package is really nice. Where you can see the missing ones, it's where I've taken the colours out to use for this piece. But I've never had such a lovely selection of colour. And it just gives you so much to choose from. But also if you're not really great with mixing colours yourself, again, you've got a great platform to start with. So the canvas boards I used for this particular one was this one because I have got some Arteza canvases I'm going to try. Super excited to work on some projects with those. But this is the size I wanted for this 16 by, 16 by 16. And when I opened up this box, I just thought, what should I do? And people that know me know I love the ocean. So I thought, let's give them a go. So I'll move this out of the way to prevent confusion. But throughout this piece, the main colours I used is my Cerulean Blue which is the A123, Ultramarine Blue, another one of my favourites, A110, Phthalo Green, A103, Titanium White, need some more already, <laughs> um, one is A101, fallen off, Raw Sienna, which is A119, Yellow Okra, which is 8113 and a little touch of brilliant red so throughout my video i will talk to you about the colors i'm using and why originally i did start with a different composition and i will talk about the colors to the end but i'm not going to list them because i don't want to confuse you and these are the colors i used so what I'm going to do now is talk you through the video as I'm creating it. I have fast forwarded it. You will find that it's at uh, three times the speed just for the process. But if you're interested, I will slow it down and do a similar one with a tutorial. But I would definitely say these Arteza pigments are amazing. I definitely give them a thumbs up and they've been really great to interact with. So, And if you do want to order them, there is a link under my description. So just click in that and it will be relevant to whether you are whereabouts in the world you are based on. But let's get creative. Let's see this process. Hi everybody, on this very first coat I'm not going to give too much commentary because this image changes drastically on the second coat. So I was playing with the preset colours like the sky colour and just really trying to understand how these pigments work and interact and cover and I got lost in the creative space and I enjoyed these colours. I enjoyed how it was coming together but when I woke up the next day it didn't feel right but I will come back and work on a more stormy ocean scene which is what I think was trying to come out here but I went to the more light and vibrant one. So just enjoy me seeing how I start to map it out and thinking out loud on my canvas. Don't get too attached to this piece or wanting to know these colours because it'll just confuse you. You do see the colours at the beginning which is what uh, occurred on my second and third coat. So I won't give commentary now. I'm going to let you sit back, relax, enjoy this piece. If you don't want to see this first composition, jump along to the second layer. Other than that, I'll see you back there and I'll talk you through what it is that I'm doing.
so I'm back the next morning with fresh eyes and I was freshly inspired by the lady I mentioned early uh, Katie Jobling uh, her color choices uh, but for me I really wanted to I because I've been feeling a, a little bit stressed with the house move and the amount of work that you have to go into your art and your channel as well as a full-time career that I have sometimes as an artist for me personally I feel like I need to give back to myself and reconnect to stuff that makes me happy and not just the ones that I think is likely to get you more subscribers and yes everybody wants more subscribers that's why we have a channel we want to share we want to get out out here and you know make get probably get noticed or at least earn enough money to um, cover our hobby or um, phase into that professional world semi uh, that's the dream but the reality is for me I never want to really compromise what I enjoy doing as art and for me this is why I needed to go back to canvas as I mentioned before I wanted to reconnect I wanted to feel centered and calm and I wanted to make sure that I was just enough the skills <laughs> um, because fluid art is amazing I love it and yes I do try and, and mash them together so there is still skills there but it's a different kind of skill and I wanted to make sure that I was stretching that muscle and I really enjoyed this I went into my creative zone and what I really enjoy about this is you can keep changing it there's no time pressure on this it can be whatever you want it to be and with acrylics even though they may look like they're a solid color they're not the semi-transparent so the layers that you do are important because that's what gives you that depth that's what gives you those tones coming through and that's what makes you feel real so at the minute what I am doing is I'm working on depth I wanted to blend out the colors and gray them out in the back work on that skyline and then as it pulls forward make the front the hero with that beautiful color and richness so you'll see me working backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and i encourage you to do that until you the artist are happy with your results and sometimes you have something that's nice you go over it and it's not so quite so nice and you have to keep going and you have to be willing to keep exploring experimenting and at the end of the day nothing's going to go wrong you can come back and redo it and redo it until you're happy and i'm really happy with this so um i'm going to leave you a little bit now and as i feel there's anything i can add value i'll speak but i want you to just relax and just have this lens into my creative window and see what i do and apologies for my head that keeps going in the way and blurring out that camera so currently I am just trying to get my sky to look more real. I'm trying to gradate it from the top to the bottom. I'm trying to give you that slight gray haze on the horizon. And I'm trying to dull out and make those colors at the back of the ocean deep and not as vibrant and pull through to the beginning. Anyway, enjoy the music. Thank you for hanging out with me.
you're enjoying watching me create now at the moment I am considering my waves when I connect with the ocean in Australia they usually or to me come in sets of three and I didn't want them to be disjointed like they were originally uh, and go in different directions which ocean waves can do and I definitely have seen that but uh, what I wanted was to imagine sitting on that beach coming towards the end of the day the sun is all over you and you're just sat looking at those waves lapping in at you so I wanted to create three rolling waves that are coming towards you on the beach so what I know I needed to do was to just be brave change that composition and with waves it's that trick on the eye of imagining that wave coming up and so you see more transparency and you get to see the richness of the color of the ocean that's what I'm thinking and feeling and normally with the wave you get your dark color at the bottom where it's starting to build that momentum and it phases through and as it curls over you'll get to see the peak of the color before it breaks into that white foam so that's what currently I'm doing at this stage I don't know if it's gonna work out how I want and I'm still just mapping out colors but once I've done this I started to genuinely get a sense that yes I'm happy with this composition where I just need to work out is the depth and how far away they are and then how I'm gonna blend those colors through sorry just wipe my mic there anyway enjoy watching these waves come to life and I hope that you're gonna feel relaxed and I hope you do stay with me and remember if you do want to see this done as a tutorial make sure you pass on that feedback to me relax enjoy and i'll be back with you shortly
and how it plays those tricks on your mind that even though it's green um, when you're looking through you still see the ocean and I'm trying to keep it quite scruffy towards the front and that's purposely because the neater your art is or the more scruffy it is the more real it can look and I'm trying to just dab it on at the front and see how I'm going to blend my sand through to it and try and keep that sense of movement and add a little bit of blue tones through there so we're more or less at the end of the second layer as we move on to the next piece that's where you'll start to see me sculpting a little bit and you'll start to see the depth the movement the 3d effect and everything come together and that's where it gets exciting but don't ever rush the layers that you need to do because that's what will add it more lifelike you'll end up creating different tones and textures you'll make sure that your canvas is fully covered and there's no white bits coming through and just never never feel that pressure and for me this is where I'm excited because it starts to come to life uh, and I start to really connect and I really get lost in it but I'm sure and I'm digressing <laughs> I'm not going to talk too much more uh, but I hope you enjoy it. and I'm so sorry my head at this stage really gets in the way of the camera but I've tried to remove some that you just see in my head but I've tried to keep true for you seeing the full process and for me I'm trying to understand how do I gradiate more towards the back of the wave but keep the essence of the distance so you needed that darker color but I wanted to create that movement and so again I'm just going backwards and forwards until it feels right and it's a learning process with each piece you just get better and uh, it's it's fun going on that adventure never knowing where this piece is going to end until it feels right and uh, yeah I'm going to leave you again uh, I've got no more to add at this stage <laughs> What you can see me doing now is with an almost dry paintbrush with a tiny little bit of that sand colour in, I'm just smudging it into the colours to try and pick up some of those toes and give it that transparency of that sand coming back through again. When working on your acrylic painting, it's important that you move on to different areas whilst other areas dry and that you just uh, bear that in mind. Now I'm still trying to work out how I get it a bit lighter at the front so that when that foam parts there it's going to represent that milky effect that you get. But I quite enjoyed the effect of uh, putting my dry, almost dry paintbrush in and adding those tones through. It picks it up beautifully and it, sometimes it's very subtle but you just need to make sure you don't overcommit with it or go too far back because you've got to Im imagine you sat on that beach and when you've seen that sand churn and all that transparency how far back are you going to see it considering the wave movements that you're adding and things like that so yeah i just thought i'd give you that little bit of commentary <laughs>
So I'm about to add a thin brown line. Now this is optional. If you want this or not, don't do it. But you'll see when I'm doing my resin art or anything, while ever there is ocean connecting with the sand, you're going to get that tiny little bit of shadow. So I encourage you to have a go at painting it in the whole shoreline. You're probably going to cover up 99% of this. But you don't know until you start creating that foam where do you want it to be. So in your mind's eye, you can start to think about where do you want it to look like this ocean sucking back or that you're creating that depth and that rolling motion. It looks kind of cartoony at this stage, but remember I'm thinking about three or four uh, processes ahead. So I definitely will, given... Um, oh, I've lost my train of thought. I, I would just say definitely give it a go and it will add so much value to your painting and hopefully as you see this progress you'll understand what it is that I'm meaning and yeah that's it Roger and out <laughs> So what you'll see me do now is introducing my palette knife. Now that helps give a really nice feature. It also gives you a very solid sort of line, but also it adds to that depth. And I love it when I start to get the palette knife out and start introducing these effects and that. So I'm, I'm very happy that I think that part now is done. And you'll start to see me using it for putting little bits of paint on it and dragging across at the back because what that will do is hopefully give you the illusion of movement in the ocean further back and you're bringing in some of those slightly lighter tones uh, all the way through and you'll see me get the palette knife out again when it comes to add to the waves but I just thought I'd mention that's what I'm currently doing there This is where it starts to get even more exciting for me. On my palette knife, I am going to, or should I say with my paintbrush, start mapping out where I feel the crests of the wave are. Now this is not white, it is the same as the skyline where you create the haze where you've got a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, um, tiny little bit of red, just to give you that gray tone. Because what I want is the under undertone of the foam. So I'm just dabbing it on, sensing and telling a story as to where I feel the waves are crashing and trying to keep that perspective. Now, you might choose that you only want a little bit of foam on one end and that it's just starting to raise and form. And uh, for me, I wanted to feel like they're fairly near the uh, shoreline and that they're already crashing over. So I love um, the feeling that this gives you once you start to see that 3D and sometimes I can be focusing on dabbing my phone and then the wave will come really into focus with me and I'll go wow <laughs> uh, and I think that's not necessarily going wow my work's the best out there but you're thinking wow that suddenly has taken on a 3D shape and I can really see it and I think it's amazing when you stand back and look at your own work and think did I just do that and wow that's amazing and um, I think that's where you're getting growth within your art so I'm just slightly dabbing trying not to overdo it but also trying to think about perspective I'm making sure that you can see those tiny little brush strokes because I think that adds to the reality of and the depth of that breaking foam and splashing everywhere 
You will see me once I've done this come in with whiter foam and that's on my palette knife. And you do that in a slightly swirly motion uh, to imagine that the ocean's churning, but trying to keep some of these darker undertones or the gray undertones underneath. Again, that adds to that illusion. What you'll see once I've done this part though, I then come back to my waves and try to make them not look like they've got the solid line of dark and light and just blend them through. And that's a backwards and forwards motion until I'm really happy that I feel that represents the tones that I want in my ocean and waves, but also that sense of movement. So yeah, I hope you enjoy seeing this part come to life. Once I've done that, you'll see me come to the foreground and play on that breaking foam as it crashes on to the shoreline and then finish with my signature. And I'm super proud of this piece and I know there's room for improvements, but I just love the feeling and the emotion you get. And I can almost hear these waves crashing and I hope you can. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for being willing to sit and watch a lens into my creative space and just remember if you would like to see more of this type of art if you would like a tutorial if you would like to see me doing this live over a few weeks I'm happy to do that but I just love your feedback but I just want to set the precedent that I will be exploring all kinds of mediums within my art and my channel and I hope you don't mind seeing those processes with me but remember thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome and remember i love to interact with you sorry i'm just distracted looking at how you create that foam there's no rhyme or reason to this let your paintbrush tell you where it wants you to go try not to overcomplicate it but you should start to see movement shadow and a sense of that lapping ocean anyway i'm sharon i'm digressing for the last time it's been a pleasure I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you on the next video.
So you've just watched me gradiate in that way from dark to light so there's no harsh lines until I'm happy that it feels like it's oceans moving. You've seen me add the blue foam to the wave and you've seen me add it to the front and you've also seen me add the little blue lines that creates that sense of the sun glaring on the ocean it's lapping what you see me now is adding tones of the sand with some of the blue to try and give you also that sense of depth or movement and creating that 3d look i'll finish this and the waves off by coming in with the bright white but not too much so that that also gives the illusions and unfortunately you can't see it here but what i am showing you is the wave that's just crashed on the ocean blending that line and putting a few of the foam horses on top of it very subtly and a few little dots around it so it just looks like the sun might be glistening on it anyway you thought i was done i thought i'd done but i came back because i realized i'd missed this but i am done now thank you again have an amazing day
I am coming in for the final review of this piece. So I will add a coat of resin later. I just want to make sure it really dries. I managed to get my sides beautifully look. <laughs> and I'm going side by side just to see if you can see different tones or see different things. But I love this. I really enjoyed the connecting with the paintbrush and the canvas. I really enjoyed stretching that muscle that I have with creating this and not relying on fluid art. I really do enjoy the colours and how all the bumps on the canvas come through. I love the illusion and the manipulation you can give by the use of colour and the placements of colour. And I love that this piece, I feel, is quite alive with movement and definitely reminds me of the ocean in Australia. I just want to walk down the beach. My token bird there, because whenever I capture a photo at the beach, there is normally always a bird in there. And I can only improve on this. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope that you will give something like this a go. And I hope you don't mind me sharing what's true to my heart Art, art when it comes to art and I do like to mix it up and I like to do what makes me happy and I don't want to do it just for views on my channel but hopefully if you're a true supporter of my art and my channel you will appreciate seeing all types of my art anyway I'm Sharon I'm digressing remember thumbs up subscribe share remember comments are always welcome remember to click on those links if you're interested in these beautiful Artessa pigments and remember to you know come back and see me again it's been nice hanging out i'm going to leave you now and i'll see you on the next one